So let's look at the more advanced questions now. So some of these will be much trickier because we have fractions, but if we're careful with our exponent properties after we rewrite this in exponential notation, then it's the same method and it can still be straightforward. So this one is log base two of 1 64th. So two to what power gives you 1 64th? And if we raise two to a power and we end up with a fraction, we know we're gonna be raising two to some negative power. Since we're dealing with repeated division in this case, which is what negative exponents are. But let's rewrite this. I'll call this a letter. Let's say this is equal to B so that we can rewrite two to that missing exponent, which is B is equal to one over 64. Now, if we can get everything to a base of two, this would make a lot more sense. So one sixty-fourth, or let's just say 64, that's really two to some power or two to the sixth power. Since if you multiply two out six different times, this would be eight, that'd be eight, eight times eight is 64. So we could rewrite this as two to the b power, where b is our logarithm that we're trying to find, is equal to one over two to the sixth power. But we're dividing by two six times. So repeated division is negative exponents. So we could rewrite this as two to the b equals two to the minus six. Since again, this negative exponent just means divide two six different times, which is exactly what we started with, this one sixty-fourth if you were to simplify it. And now that the base is the same, for these to be equal, the exponents have to be the same. So b in this case would be negative six. So if you raise two to the negative six power, that just means divide by two six times. And dividing by two six times is the same as or dividing by 64. So we put negative six up in our box here. And we can keep going. So this one, we have log base one fifth of five. So one fifth is the base of our exponential expression. And let's just say this is equal to maybe D. And we're gonna raise this to the D power to get five. So remember, it's always one fifth to what power gives you five. And that power we're trying to find is what the logarithm is equal to, which I call D in this case. So for this one, again, we wanna end up with the same base or we could either change this to one fifth to some power or rewrite this as five to some power. So let's rewrite the fraction as five to some power. Since we're dividing by five once, this is equivalent to five to the minus one. Since raising something to the negative one power just means divide by that number one time. So these are equivalent. We can rewrite this as five to the minus one to the d power, and this is equal to five. And remember when you have an exponent to an exponent that you're just multiplying. So five to the minus d is equal to five, and I'll write this to the first power. Since now they have the same base, and for this to be true, their exponents have to be equal. So we can conclude that negative d is equal to one, or if I multiply or divide everything by negative one, then d is negative one. So that's our answer. That's what we'd put in the box here. And let's do one more of these advanced ones. But like I mentioned, they all essentially follow the same pattern. You want to reduce everything to the same base. So this logarithm is just log base 25 of 1 over 125. So we can rewrite this in our exponential notation. The base is 25. And let's just set this equal to x. That's our missing exponent here. So we can put x up there. And this will be equal to the inside of the logarithm, which is 1 over 125. Now, 25 and 125 each will not work as a base since 125 is not some power of 25. But they are each powers of 5. 
since we know that 5 squared is 25, and 125 is really just 5 to the third power. So let's rewrite that, putting everything with base 5. Sometimes you have to change both of them so that you can end up with a common base. So really, this is just 5 squared to the x, and we have 1 over 5 to the third. Now on the right side, we're dividing by 5 three times, which is the same thing as 5 to the minus 3 power. And for this one, we have an exponent to an exponent, so we're going to multiply. So this is really just 5 to the 2x equals 5 to the minus 3. And now notice they have the same base. So for this to be true, their exponents must be equal to each other. So we can write that out that the 2x, the exponent on the left, is equal to the negative 3, the exponent on the right. And this can only be done once you have the same base on each side. So we can solve for x here, divide everything by 2, and x is this negative fraction minus 3 halves. So you can check this by just asking, is it true that 25 to the minus 3 halves is 1 over 20, 125? So 25 to the minus 3 halves. Is that equal to 1 over 125? You can check this by hand. You can also eventually use a calculator to check these. There are different ways to check it, depending what type of calculator you have. And eventually, you'll learn what's called the change of base rule, which will work on much more calculators. But if you have one of the newer graphing calculators, you can actually customize what your base is and what your input is. So to check this by hand, though, well, we're raising it to a negative exponent, so that's the same thing as dividing, and we will make it a positive exponent. And we're first either taking the cube of this or taking a square root of this, but it's usually easier to take the root first. So let's take a square root of this. This becomes 5 when we take the square root, and so we just need 5 cubed. But 5 to the third power is 125, and we're dividing by that. So it is true that this would equal 1 over 125, which means we can feel confident that this is the right answer. So in our box, this logarithm, this missing exponent that we're looking for is minus 3 over 2.